For many, becoming an actor is the ultimate dream job. But most of these performers had their sights set elsewhere. School of Rock was a film that helped prove Jack Black was more than just a gimmick. He had appeared in movies before and found plenty of success with his musical group Tenacious D. But this was a flick that helped transform him into a household name. What truly makes him shine in School of Rock is the way he works with his reluctant bandmates. And of that group of students, there are a few kids as memorable as Lawrence, the keyboard maestro. Played by Robert Tsai, Lawrence is one of the most skilled performers in the band, but his insecurities nearly derail his opportunities. I don't think I should be in the band. Why not? I'm not cool enough. According to School of Rock director Richard Linklater, he drew on a real interaction with Robert Tsai for Lawrence's emotional scene. Tsai apparently tried to quit the film, telling Linklater that he thought he was unfit for the role. The director convinced him to stay, and reworked that conversation into a scene where Lawrence expressed his concern that he's not cool enough to be in the band. Tsai never acted again after School of Rock, but he continues to perform as a classical pianist. For a bit of childhood wonder, look no further than Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The 1971 movie is remembered for many things, including Gene Wilder's iconic purple-suited chocolatier, a number of deceptive traps, some very ominous songs, and the blue-eyed hero of it all, Charlie Bucket. Played by Peter Ostrom, Charlie proves his selflessness to Wonka and wins the day, sparking hope for his destitute family when he is awarded Wonka's factory. Ostrom told the Journal of the American Veterinary Medical Association that after playing the role of Charlie, he was offered a three-film deal by the studio if he signed with them. However, he declined in order to keep his options open and give himself more freedom. Though he did audition for a few more roles as he got older, Ostrom was drawn to the world of veterinary medicine. He eventually moved to New York and claimed to distance himself from the movie, rarely telling people about that part of his life. But as he's grown older, he's embraced that aspect of his history, especially the mentoring relationship he had with Wilder. Steven Spielberg's Hook is fondly remembered for its incredible cast and fun reimagining of the classic Peter Pan story. Who can forget Dustin Hoffman's scenery-chewing Captain Hook performance? Or Robin Williams' Peter Pan and his playful banter with Julia Roberts' Tinkerbell? The Boo Box, Run Home Jack, Rufio! We're talking about a stone-cold classic right here. <laughs> Looky, looky, I got hooky. Often lost in the shuffle is Peter's daughter, Maggie. Played by then seven-year-old Amber Scott, Maggie has scene-stealing moments throughout the film. But despite her terrific performance, Scott's only other acting credit is as a voice actor on the historical documentary series American Experience. Scott seemingly went on to a normal life as she grew older, attending Trinity College and getting her degree. She eventually updated a headshot on IMDb and received a producer credit for the short film Cannonball. Maybe she's still gearing up for a return to Hollywood, but we haven't heard anything in a few years from her camp. There are only a handful of films that commonly get mentioned in debates over the best sci-fi movies of all time, but Aliens is generally on the shortlist. Released in 1986, it leans hard into its high-octane action to tell an entirely different story than its predecessor, one that still holds up as a classic today. Aliens is largely successful because of the very relatable relationship between Ripley and Newt, the scared little girl she protects from the xenomorph menace. Played by Carrie Henn, Newt gives the audience a surrogate character who is just as terrified in the face of an interstellar monster as we would be, fighting to stay alive against all the odds. Despite her strong performance, the timing just didn't work out for Henn. After Aliens was released, her family had already moved from London to the United States. She told Wyatt that she had grown more interested in becoming an educator than an actor, leading her to a career as an elementary teacher. Even so, Henn embraces her legendary role. You can catch her at conventions, and she is happy to sign autographs for her students when they realize who she is. The American Road Movie's poster child is Easy Rider, but there's a number of films that fit the category. One that often flies under the radar is Tulane Blacktop, a minimalistic film about a duo of road racers who flit across the country in their Chevy 150. Singer-songwriter James Taylor and Beach Boys drummer Dennis Wilson play the lead roles. And while Taylor has since done sporadic acting in his career, Wilson only made this one appearance on film. Wilson may have been primed for a successful career as both a musician and an actor, but one unlucky encounter seemed to derail his life. The Beach Boys drummer had a habit of picking up hitchhikers, and one day he brought two young women back to his home. After leaving for a recording session, he came back to his house to discover the women had invited even more people over. One of them was a young Charles Manson. As Wilson's life was slowly eroded by Manson and his cult, he turned to heavy substance abuse. He died at the age of 39, drowning after diving into Marina del Rey. 
Though not as impactful as The Omen, the sequel is vastly superior to the third and fourth entries in the franchise, and we don't even bother with the 2006 remake. In Damien, Omen 2, everyone's favorite Antichrist is a preteen living with his uncle in Chicago and attending a military academy. The only semblance of a true friend he has is his cousin Mark, played by Lucas Donat. When Mark learns Damien's true nature and confronts him, Damien gives him the chance to join him. Mark refuses, and Damien kills his cousin in order to protect his secret. After leaving the acting profession, Donat became a prolific advertising executive for Tiny Rebellion, a firm that won the 2014 Small Agency Award from Ad Age. Donat has been praised for his disruptive approach and for helping to spearhead the marketing campaigns for companies like LegalZoom and eHarmony.